You don't have a uh, sprout today. No sprout, no spud. No spud. Can't be in the spud game if you don't have the spud. Monday, uh, April, no, August. August. <laughs> 14th. It'll be funny to leave that. Yeah. <laughs> April, where the hell were we? <laughs> Trail day seven. Trail day seven. <laughs> in Dobioios, uh, Wyoming to Atlantic City, where the girls are pretty. 170 miles. This is the big single biggest day on the trail. This is a cold one. <clears throat> Do you mind if I get a video if you say like your name and how far you're going? Okay. You can say it in Spanish if you want. In no problem. Yeah, we we could translate it. Okay. Or try. <laughs> Hola, soy Luca Pendino del Trebol. He kind of told us everything about what he was doing in his trip and where he was heading and where he came from and how many miles he still had to go and he was doing a crazy trip all the way from Argentina to Alaska, then from Alaska to Miami, and he was already on his way to Miami. So yeah. he had already done the biggest leg of his trip. So we looked him up, and it was a big deal for his hometown. Yeah. Like, people got together, put him on the news, bid him farewell, right. and he left on this amazing journey of a lifetime. Farewell, friend. And here we are, just three idiots on dirt bikes. <laughs> yeah. um, it rained all fucking morning and it was cold. trails were pretty wide. It's mainly just back gravel roads that we were driving along and they went on forever. There was cows, of course, on the sidelines that we kept passing and we got to hit some sweet puddles because of the rain. Mm -hmm. But we eventually had to fill up on gas and that's when we decided, hey, might as well do a sweet ass gear review. So this is the stock tank that comes on the uh, 2006 KTM 450 EXC and I believe it's a two gallon tank and I just got 79 miles out of it on regular. Um, I've also managed to get 83 miles out of it running mid-grade. Using this handy dandy roto packs to fill up. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Does my hair look good? Yeah. Nice. You don't have a... Uh sprout today. No sprout, no spud. No spud. Can't be in the spud game if you don't have the spud. So the great thing about these Wolfman bags is all the different ways that you can mount them to your bike. Um, so what I did is I took one of my climbing carabiners and I hooked it to the back end of it so that it's quick and easy for me to just strap it underneath my roto pack and I can easily lift it on and off when I need to refill my tank. So in this duffel, I keep the majority of my gear for camping. I've got my tent, and then I've got my sleeping pad, and I have my small 55 degree uh, sleeping bag, which is not warm enough. I have my jet foil for cooking, and then different various articles of clothing that I've squeezed in here with it. And it all fits down just like this, and it's a perfect way to travel with all the gear that you need. It's one of the best bags that you can buy. Oh, man. <laughs> So I got the dry spec D78 kit. I went back and forth about these and the Wolfmans for a long time, but these were a couple hundred dollars less. I like how dry they keep everything, but the thing that I don't like is they're not easy to get on and off. There's eight things I have to unlatch to get this off in order to get to my fuel or tools, which I have packed in there. And overall, I really like these bags. It's just the way that they come on and off is what I don't like. 
So there you go. You can decide on your own what to do about a trail pack. So we keep going through the Wyoming flatness and we come across this thing on the GPS that just says, it's just like a red line. Where are we? Uh, we are in wild and wonderful Wyoming on some trail that's not a road. It's just a little red line on the GPS. It got hot all of a sudden. We got this creep following us. <laughs> we picked him up over at lunch. At There's the some town. oil. They're doing some oil drilling or something back there. Top secret. Yeah. Probably space stuff. It's probably alien oil. Mm hmm. It's sort of like something out of Breaking Bad, just like this wide open. You could see for miles, yeah. but there's no one around. There's no trees, there's no structures. And then just these like little ground covering bushes and stuff. But it was sort of like a motocross playground out there. So you hit these wide open roads that are like big enough for two like semis to probably be on and you can see for miles so we're just ripping it. Probably 70 miles an hour. Like you just don't even change out of top gear, just flying down the road. <laughs> But then we were like, we should probably find a town with gas. Yeah. And so we went on more of these back roads. And then we started to come across these mining towns. It was really weird. So we ended up, the campsite ended up being maybe like three miles out of town. And so we headed out, we hit this campsite and built our tents and hunkered down for the big storm. And I made my dinner in the tent. Let's just call it a night. So we got rained out this morning. And then we got to leave early right here and then get rained out the second we get here. It's good to leave early. <laughs>